scientist, whatever his theory was at the time. Because we, we, I mean, there's there's a so lot of examples. You of don't it. think a thousand years from now they're going to be looking back at us, they're say, having the same exact conversation about us today? Guaranteed. So, what are you calling science then? If 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 a thousand years from now they're gonna they're gonna be sitting there saying, I wouldn't call that science. What what those two motherfuckers are talking about in 2022? I wouldn't call that science. I would call that, and I just regurgitate everything that you just said. So to a certain degree, in my opinion, we are using faith. Science is our religion, and we're choosing that religion because it's the religion of logic. I'm, if if I if I if I needed to paint it that way, I guess I could paint it that way. I just there's no practical use for me. That's what I guess that's what it is. There's no practical use for me to call science religion. Ah, but for me there is, so that's why <laughs> that's where we differ. That's where we differ. For me, it's uh, see for me. It, my, it, does it, it is it is it a mechanism that you would use to check your biases? Exactly. So my my science being my religion. I'm not just a cute face. <laughs> science being my religion. It. it what is the mission statement of the religion, so to speak? And the mission statement, the goal of the religion is to obtain objective truth. Almost like Christianity, you want to obtain it's, the the purity of Jesus Christ. You can never you can never get there. You aspire to get there, but you can never reach it. It's like the speed of light. You know what? I like science uh, so much more and that I like the space to keep science separate from religion is because... The community's sole goal, if you go and you make a theory, your peers' jobs, your peers' job is to scrutinize and try to um, disprove it. So we can all get to a consensus of, you know what? This is the best information we got. This is with religion. I can't so, say so for all religions, but for most religions, I have dogmas. Yeah, the the scrutiny isn't there enough for me to 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 constitute re, uh, the science as a religion. But that is why I would argue that I chose science to be my religion. Because my the reason I say religion is because to a certain extent I still have to have faith in any given. T- so okay, so if the mission statement of science is to obtain objective truth. But you are you are limited the same way in Christianity you are limited to being sin, sinful, you you cannot be pure, pure you know completely pure of sin. Mm-hmm. Only Jesus Christ was pure of sin. So similar to that science, there's objective truth, but you can only have your subjective truth. You can never actually get attain that objective truth with a hundred percent confidence. Maybe you're at ninety nine point nine percent, but you can never get to a hundred percent. That's fine. You, you know, we can be 99.9% sure that the sun's going to rise tomorrow and set in the West, but we can't say it with 100% certainty. I'm okay with those, but I'm okay with those numbers. Y- yes, but my, but my point is that, <laughs> that <laughs> just understanding that, understanding the faith in it okay. allows me to focus in on it as having that place in my like in my brain in my heart that other people have other religions so i can agree to that extent that you have a belief in i see where you're coming from a little bit more clearer now that you your belief in science is that of somebody who is just that has that blind faith in their religion um so you, you can see the parallels in i guess their belief system and your belief system in science and using it to my advantage and being motivated by it and disciplined by it. it and it's similar it's similar to your answer i think we would we agree more than we disagree because my understanding of science is what helps me maneuver the reality of my actions are what dictates my outcomes so I'm the scientist of my life. You're a Scientologist. <laughs> nah, nah, hell no. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> some things are just never gonna happen. But yeah, so I, you know, I something happens. You, I want to figure out what is the objective truth behind why that happened, and so I can understand it better. And if we lived in a um, 
post-apocalyptic um, future and religions have completely taken over they don't care what religion but you're not allowed to be an atheist what religion you're picking buddhist buddhism nice you noise um you look like a mormon to me <laughs> sister wives this guy gets it <laughs> no you know what i would say buddhism but then i i don't believe in karma but Buddhist, it's it's like harmless. It's a very harmless religion to me. So I, I've told you my scientific theory for karma. I believe we touched on it before, but you can read. Hey, they might not ever see that episode. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good point. We get to repeat a lot here. <laughs> but my scientific explanation for karma is so you know we touched on actions, and I've definitely spoke about that before. Your thoughts lead to your 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 thoughts lead to your actions your actions lead to your outcomes and your thoughts part of your thoughts is also your subconscious your subconscious the information in your subconscious feeds into the thoughts that lead to those actions that lead to those outcomes and if you're in your subconscious you're feeding it information that you have no control over for example doing the wrong thing doing something bad you don't know how that how those acts how knowing it was the wrong thing you don't know how that plays into your subconscious that leads to certain thoughts that lead to certain actions that causes negative outcomes to happen and that to me is how karma could uh, could, could play in real life yeah the best scientific expl explanation yeah. of karma karma in action in action and we definitely touched base on it because as you were kicking it back i was just like we definitely talked about this <laughs> for sure. And, and, you know, maybe a sociopath is that person who can do the wrong thing and it's not wrong to them. So they don't have that. They don't have that in their subconscious because they literally, using literally in the correct form, they literally don't interpret what they're doing as anything bad or wrong. Which would counter your... Exactly. Yeah. That's, that's the... Uh, that's so that's where karma is not absolute, <laughs> but karma can be thought of in a sense of you don't know your subconscious. So if you are a normal person and you know when you do something wrong, you don't you want to be fearful of how knowing what you're doing is wrong. You want to be fearful of what damage that's doing to your subconscious, which is going to feed your thoughts, that feeds your actions, that is going to play a role in your outcomes. So that's where karma karma is important. I yes. can see why karma is important. I can see why, even if they're wrong about the literalness of right. of the mechanism, I can see where it is important to understand and consider. It's kind of like when my grandmother used to be like, "You don't need to don't watch too much Harry Potter because that type of stuff, you know, gets in your brain, and it's a lot of dark, you know, magical stuff." And that's the work of the devil. Yeah, a lot of gr grooming children. That has to do with a lot with feeding into their subconscious. And they think it's their idea. Mm. You know, speaking of Pride Month, I have this theory. I don't know if we talked about this. This is very, this might be it for after hours. You know what? <laughs> I found the perfect after hours topic. I always find a way to bring up after hours. So do the radio thing. The, no, the radio thing where you, how do you, how do we, um, advertise after hours so after after the show <laughs> <laughs> i'm letting him do it <laughs> yeah but that's your skill so after every episode we kick it back we get a little bit more wild we get a little bit more exactly faded we get a little exactly. bit more cross faded yeah. as the liquor kicks in you want to stick around for the uh the second show or what we call after hours where we get a little more lit it's a little more it's probably not gonna be youtube safe but um it's gonna be paywall safe it's oh you better believe it <laughs> <laughs> nice one nice one he gets it he but gets yeah it. so i tend to naturally it's not planned tease that through, throughout the regular episode what's gonna happen in the after hours but i have a very interesting theory about the lgbt community it's a very, very you, miss a, you miss the letters Oh The LGBTQIA2S Plus 
Are you bullshitting or are you serious? I'm serious. I'm not doing it. Uh, I, I mean, <laughs> I, I might be wrong a little bit, but it's lesbian, gay, bisexual, trans, queer slash questioning, uh, two spirit, intersex, asexual, uh, pansexual. I'm not doing it. And then I guess the plus is for I'm, everything else. I'm not doing it. I'm not. How do you feel about BIPOC being added to the flag? Oh, we, we spoke about this. I don't, I don't, don't, don't. Don't be lumped in with yeah, it. <laughs> don't, don't. Your pain is your pain. I respect y'all. I, I respect the experience. I respect the experience. Um, my contacts are going dry. Sorry, guys. Um, I expect the experience that LGBT QIA P because I, I I heard a reference today and then and they literally stopped at the A and I was just like where did the A come from? That's asexual. Wasn't that asexual? That means you don't like anything. You don't have any attraction to anything. You just don't think about sex at all. Like you have no drive, no sex drive. What? Why do they need anything? That's what I said. That's exactly what I said. That's what a lot of people say. Why do they even need to be acknowledged? Just don't fuck nothing. No, I, I don't care. What they, kind of. It's just, it's, it's just like, you know, God, God, that gives, <laughs> that's a headache. But, but I want to get into my theory that's very, very taboo. I have a theory. I've spoken about it with members of the LGBT community. Just one member that I feel confident because not the spoke person. I'm a nice. No, I'm an. <laughs> I mean, I'm, a, I'm an asshole. I, I don't hold back a lot. I, I'm willing to speak freely most of the time, right? And, yeah, so. and this theory is a little too much for me. That even I, even I'm scared of it. Where I could only talk about it to one with one person. Like you scared it? Like it's like the, the ability of cancel ability uh, cancel. No, uh, of the of I'm I'm scared of its ability to lead to not understanding them in a it, remember so my subjective reality objective reality is a very compelling argument to me but i don't have enough reason to i don't feel confident in the percentage of probability that it's true that it's trying to hold in my thoughts i don't feel confident that i have the evidence to back it i don't have the confidence to i don't feel comfortable with the confidence that i have in its truthfulness okay I don't feel confident enough based on the evidence I have, but it's compelling to me. So that's where I'm, you know. Damn, I want to hear it now. Uh, that's, 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 for, gonna save it. that's for after hours. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I definitely got a lot to learn, guys, because I've I've been out the loop in terms of the LGBTQIA2S plus. Hanamana Manapina. Two S is two um, S is gangster. Two spirit. What? Is, okay. What? What's that? Two spirit. I, I, I believe it's like a spirit animal. I believe two spirit is mostly found in the Native American culture, where they're, I guess, modern Native Americans that identify with their Trans. like earth spirit and their you know animal spirit exactly or their you know. Oh, that's like Kevin Gates. Because he always talks about the, he's a rapper, and he talks about the spirit of the jaguar. He wears like a feather in his hair. Oh wow! I work out at a lot of Kevin Gates. I'm a huge yeah. Kevin Gates fan. But you know, like Blackfoot Ravenclaw. I don't know if that's a name for Native American out there. It probably is, but that <laughs> somehow was racist. But it wasn't because it might literally it be, be a name. There's some dude listening out there who's like perked up. So, <laughs> I was thinking he was, going, he was, like, do, he was doing tiger. his homework or he was he, he was doing some mechanic work. All of a sudden, he heard his name. Be like Tiger Billy. Well, man. shout out to you, Blackfoot Ravenclaw. But you know, maybe Blackfoot Ravenclaw. He identifies with his human form and identifies with his bird form. So he could be two spirit. That's I, I I could go with that. It doesn't mean shit to me. But there's probably some white kids in but Seattle that way, think they're two spirit they're too, way. and they think oh, they're they're, they're some eagle or some shit. Those are Antifas. <laughs> Those are Antifas. Nah, um, that's a fact. Mm-hmm. I think this is going too far, man. Look, um, but I, I do like it. 
I mean, you know, because you know, I'm I'm actually Native American, like this, like this much right here. I did my ancestry, and I'm scared to do it. I'm because you don't want them to clone you. Nah, I don't want to know how much percentage black I am. Oh, <laughs> this guy right, he doesn't know this. I'm this scared. is the best part. I'm scared. I'm, I'm, I'm scared the cops come. I'm like me. a high percent. Like when I looked into my African ancestry. I was like, yo, I'm actually Nigerian. Well, my brother is 42% black. Legit? I knew y'all niggas was black. 42%. I mean, look at your dad and your grandma. It's like when... Where do you think... Where does that come from? 42%. That (laughs) doesn't sound like a majority. (laughs) It's fucking half, guy. You guys are black, man. And y'all black and Taino and French probably or some shit like that. Do you have any Taino blood? I don't remember. But I know the more we do it, my brother, my son, my my brother did it. My sister and I, the more of us that do it, the more accurate it gets, I guess, because of we all have puzzle pieces to the big picture of yeah. our I, ancestry. It's crazy because my my mom and sister my mom and her sister did it and they're like the degrees of north and southern Indian was di- yeah. was different. Because, you know, my um grandfather's Pakistani and so Pakistan is a territory or a land, but really the nigga came from India. Yeah. I'm going way left field now, but part of the reason I don't do the DNA test, to be honest, is I don't think it's worth the money since I don't have enough money to know. It's like 99 bucks. Yeah, but to, I don't know how much it's all bullshit. How much it's how much is it them just trying to have deep people's DNA on file for other fuckery? Well. Mm, I'm willing to play the game if they're going to make another nigga like me. What if they create viruses that only affect niggas like you? <laughs> they did. It's called crack, COVID. Oh. Crack, COVID. <laughs> uh, hypertension. Crack, crack was created <laughs> just to exploit something exactly. about the black DNA. That's hilarious. So it's nothing new. <laughs> I'm immune to this shit. Crack? No, nah, I've never done crack in my life. I have done coke, but I've never done crack. I think we're, we're flirting with it. We're flirting with it after <laughs> hours too much. A little too much? <laughs> Sorry. I, don't, I do not condone taking drugs. I mean, at this age, I am no longer... I've made up my mind at 35, my days of experimenting with drugs. With I don't call mushrooms a drug. So... I, I, don't, I don't call anything drugs. I call everything tools. It's how you hey. use it. It's all, it's all how you use it. Because a, a crackhead told me some of the best information <laughs> I've ever heard. Please share. He said, don't do crack. Legit. We was in there. He's like, as he, we know he's high. And he's just like, don't, don't do what I'm doing, guys. And we was like, clearly, because this <laughs> it's not working out for you, man. <laughs> to hear it from him. But to hear it from the horse's mouth as he's. And then later that night, he had got stabbed up because he was, like, trying to break into somebody's house. And I was like, wow, that's the guy that told us, like, you know, like, good information. So I feel I'm, bad that he got stabbed. So I'm going to steer us away from After Hours talk. And I got, <laughs> I got, a, I got a question for you that I feel, I feel like you might open up. I'm as straight as they come, baby. Let's go. All right. You, the first thing that came out your mouth when, that, when this thing hit record was you mentioning how you getting skinny. You the one. I'm the zero right now in this 10. So how long have you been on this? Keto journey? A workout journey? Yeah. It's just health journey where you're taking it more serious than you. There's a certain period of time that has passed where you're taking it more serious than before. Oh, 100%. And what what, what amount of time is that? Uh, I would say maybe it's been about like 60 days. All right. 60 days. And you've lost how much? How many pounds? Uh, from 211 down to 185. So around 25, 30 pounds. All right. So I didn't do the math. Two months, <laughs> just two months out of your life. That's a tiny percentage, mm-hmm. tiny percentage of your life. This tiny percentage of your life, you've lost 25, 30 pounds ish. Mm-hmm. What are, what are the things that come to your mind that are the, noticeable you consciously recognize our differences improvements what are the things that has changed in a positive way oh awesome uh absolutely believe it or not as much as i would like to rave about all the like health benefits of like just being healthy physically healthy uh, obviously i sleep better i used to be like when i was like 
obese, I was snoring. I mean, my kids would literally be like, yo, dad, you is wilding. <laughs> yo, turn, um, uh, um, my partner at the time used to be like, turn on your side, Tyrone. It's just, it's just, it was not, and then if you don't, if you know anything about snoring, um, I forgot what it's called when you need the CPAP. The sleep apnea? Sleep apnea. You, you're you always tired because you're constantly waking up. Like, you can wake up 60 times in the middle of the night because you constantly, like, stop breathing. Even if you don't remember all the times you, you woke up. You're not conscious of it, but you So you're always tired. I've been getting the best sleep of my life. One, because I bust my ass working out. But it's more... For me, the journey has been more mental than just the physical, you know benefits obviously i feel better my energy levels are here my testosterone's are but, here yeah that was more my angle because yeah. everyone and their mama knows the physical benefits but that was more my my angle is oh. what are those mental changes what what you you hindsight is 2020 for sure so when you look back to the to that to the day before the 60 days started i wish i would have started earlier yes but there was there was a you, there was a consciousness, there was a thinking process, there was a, a subjective reality. And fast forward to today, you're living this subjective reality. True. And what are, when you look back at that subjective reality that was 61 days ago, what what has changed mentally? What What is, oh. what are those things that you feel are reasons that you don't regret the changes you made? Uh Oh, sure. Confidence. Every guy needs it. Every guy Thrives. The guy, a, a guy performs at his fucking best. There's no reason why the Joe Rogans, the Jockos, the Kevin Hart's, the the Dwayne Johnsons, these guys that we see are like super successful, is because of the amount of uh, uh, how much that they focus on physical health. Because that physical health translates into mental health and that confidence. Because it takes. I remember when I got on, I started I started on the treadmill and like five minutes was like a fucking struggle. Um, I beast mode that shit now. I like speeds that, you know, to, I'm already, I'm upping my fucking intensity every day. Cause it's like, this is getting, I, this is getting too easy. I need to push it. That type of energy as men, we need it. We need that, like we need that that ugh, I need a next challenge. Okay, I, I remember when um when I when I started getting lifting because it was a lot of calisthenics. I mean, it was a lot of um it was a lot of a treadmill. It was a lot of running. It was a lot of cardio. Then I got into the lifting aspect where I my my daughters walk out the room and they think like dad's like literally like mad and shit. But I'm just like yo, you're a fucking beast, man. You could do this. And I'm I'm talking to myself. I know if I was to do this in the gym, the people would just like that nigga is. Crazy. You're saying this out loud. I'm saying this out loud. Oh, that's fine. I'm full voice. You're fuck you. You you're a fuck. You made stardust. <laughs> I said this to myself, legit. But you that 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 mentally, I'm ready to deal with whatever. At any fucking time, I'm ready to go. And fitness did that for me. Working out did that for me. I was a depressed, fat piece of shit. But in the in the time, you thought you were confident because I was I was lying to myself. I was a fu I was a fucking liar. Did you know you were lying to yourself, or did you or do you only realize it now that you're on this journey? Hindsight is twenty twenty, but I 